Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 62 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. We've got quite a bit to cover today, so let's dig in. Starting this week at the Sanchez site on Friday, crews working on the second corner panel of the second mega bay made significant progress with the supporting beams for the bay's outer skin being installed. Over at the Massey's test site, Starship 25 underwent a cryogenic proof test, verifying the hull's integrity as SpaceX considers its options for the upcoming second integrated flight test of Starship. Groundwork at the launch pad has continued at a fast pace, and hydraulic drilling rigs like this one were delivered to the launch site, where they've been working non-stop to dig new pilings for the water deluge system. Over at the build site, Ship 29's nose cone and payload bay section were stacked onto the forward dome with the assembly of the ship's hull roughly halfway done. An additional supporting crane was delivered to the launch site on Saturday, joining the other heavy equipment being used to rebuild the launch pad as quickly as possible. Large pipe segments destined for the high volume water deluge system under the launch pad were also delivered to the launch site. On Sunday, crews began reinstalling the protective steel cladding around the base of the launch tower. The cladding took a significant beating during Starship's inaugural flight, but many of the panels are still in good shape. After being knocked loose during an intense thunderstorm overnight, the chopsticks cable chain was put back into place. Booster 11's forward dome section was moved from the tents and placed in the staging area in front of the mega bay. Booster 11 is the third of three boosters currently on assembly. On Thursday, Starship 29's common dome was moved into the high bay for stacking. Booster 11's forward dome was moved into the mega bay. With four more launches available this year, there's little time to waste for building ships and boosters. Late in the evening, crews began stacking Booster 11's methane tank in the mega bay. At the same time, Ship 29 was lifted for assembly work at the high bay. This week, courtesy of RGV Aerial Photography, we have more excellent eye-in-the-sky views to go through, starting off with the construction progress at the Massey's test site. On the left side, next to the current nitrogen tanks, we can see the new concrete pad forms for horizontal cryotanks. The future pads will perhaps be used by the three tanks located at the top right of the image. Next, to the right of the new pad, sits an intact 26.1 after its puck-shucking cryotest shown in last week's video. Just above that lays multiple trenches for a conduit which will hold power and control systems for the test site's cryosystems. Above Ship 25 on the new test stand are recently installed hydraulic rams from Test Stand A. Moving over to the Sanchez site again, as moving day has once again occurred for the United Rentals Maintenance Yard, we see a mostly empty patch of dirt viewed at the bottom left. Further up along the shipping container wall to the right of the two transport stand rings sits the three water-cooled steel plates under tarps being prepared to be welded. These plates, as Elon referred to as part of a massive super strong steel showerhead pointing up, will be used for protecting the ground surface area from the flamey end of the super heavy booster and attempt to prevent any future booster digging excursions. Lastly at Sanchez, visible at the top, are the three corner panel pre-assembly sections for the new mega bay with pieces for a fourth corner jig, visible below the yellow Buckner crane. Switching over to the build site again, the mega bay foundation has been completed. With the center area filled with dirt and all 16 column sections present and awaiting installation as the thick concrete pads cure. To the left, conduit sections are being completed before the three water drainage culverts can be fully connected all the way from the ring yard. To the left again, on the far side of the image, progress is rapidly showing on the second phase of the Star Factory. Additional large footings have been set and a segment equaling about 20% of the concrete floor has been poured. The area of this second phase is estimated to be around 114,000 square feet or 10,500 meters squared. This beats out the area of the current Star Factory at 97,500 square feet. What remains more impressive is what else is implied in this photo. Just above all of the Star Factory construction is a logistics operation being performed to a stunning result. 
the areas around the white fabrication building all the way up to the solar panels atop the shipping container wall are all being cleared out. This includes AC units, active production materials, stationary production systems, lean-tos, and other structures are all being removed up to Highway 4. By all appearances, the buildings, small and large, may be next on the list of things to go, including the ground fabrication building and low bay. The major implication here is the potential of Star Factory Phase 3 getting extended all the way up to the shipping container wall on Highway 4. Including other signs of building materials being moved out of tents 1 and 2, these Star Factory plans may encompass all of the tents as part of Phase 4, potentially bringing Star Factory up to around 720,000 square feet, or less than 67,000 meters squared. Lastly of RGV's flyover photos is the launch site. The site has mostly been finished with cleanup operations and is undergoing repair modifications and construction. The big news of the day here is the concrete being removed on the old landing pad for a new pad with a second pad parallel to the first expected to be below it. These pads will have approximately 100 feet foundation columns for what is believed to be the new hot dog style horizontal cryo tanks to replace the current vertical tanks Elon has previously mentioned. Next is the launch table with rapid progress in shoring up the foundations. Currently, there are four visible steel caissons, with each being about 6 feet in diameter and approximately 110 feet deep. Based on the current patterns, there is expected to be a dozen outside of the current leg structure. Another related change to the infrastructure is seen just to the left, as the insulated cryopiping was removed for access all the way from where the former protective structure known as the doghouse was located. Elon Musk made an exciting announcement in a recent tweet where he shared a graph of a Raptor 3 static fire that lasted for 70 seconds. He congratulated the SpaceX propulsion team on achieving a chamber pressure of 350 bar, which translates to 269 tons of thrust. Elon went on to mention that with the Super Heavy's 33 Raptors, the thrust with the new Raptor 3 engines will be a whopping 8,877 tons, or 19.5 million pounds. That's almost three times the thrust of the Saturn V. Elon also mentioned that the team did not expect the engine to survive a full duration run at the pressure and that it was uncharted territory. He also commented that the Raptor 3 chamber wall might have the highest heat flux of anything ever made. Over at the Cape, Doug returned to Port Canaveral after Falcon Heavy's Viasat 3 launch with both fairing halves on deck and in one piece. SpaceX's recovery ship Bob returned to port on Saturday with the fairing halves from the Starlink Group 5-6 launch. On Sunday, the Crosby Skipper returned to port with a short fall of Gravitas and Booster 1069, also from Starlink Group 5-6. Rolling over into the regular work week, Falcon 9 Booster 1069 was lifted onto the Port Canaveral docks for stowage. Crosby Skipper towed Just Read the Instructions Out to Sea for the Starlink Group 5-9 launch scheduled for this weekend. On Thursday, Bob departed as well, also in support of the upcoming Starlink Group 5-9 launch. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.